From the weather to going on a social media diet, a technology professor over at the University of Minnesota has taken a deep dive into how our devices impact our health in a variety of ways. For better and for worse, Fox 9's Leah Bino has more. It's not exactly surprising when it's nice out, more people get out. But a new study out of the University of Minnesota looked at how technology, specifically an app push or digital nudge from a phone, can best encourage people to exercise and how the weather plays a role. How do we get people to be active? Because uh, folks who are just sitting at home, watching TV, not moving a lot, we found that to be a very bad uh, epidemic. In fact, uh, the WHO finds that about 80% um, of the global population are leading sedentary lifestyle. And that could lead to a whole host of issues such as heart diseases, diabetes, um, even mood-related conditions like depression or anxiety. However, at the same time, uh, the interventions to get people to be more active doesn't seem to have a lasting impact. And so we started to wonder, right, um, is there something that we can do to make these interventions uh, more effective? Technology professor at Carlson School of Management, Jason Chan, co-authored the study with an intern at an undisclosed app company out of Asia. People will be able to guess, you know, what, what it is. And during the last two fall seasons, sent messages to participants overseas, challenging them to get out and do 10,000 steps, but worded the messaging differently based on sunny skies versus cloudy. They found on sunny days, people completed the 10,000 steps more often when the digital nudge had a negative tone. For example, you run the risk of heart disease if you don't exercise. Yet on more gloomy days, positive wording did the trick, such as you will have improved health conditions if you go out and exercise. I strongly believe as a technological uh, technology professor that uh, IT, apps, all of these things, uh, we, we could extract value out of it. Professor Chan was called upon for this study in part because of his history authoring multiple award-winning studies looking at how our time with devices impacts our health in various ways. One of his papers found a link between Craigslist usage in the personal category and how it reflects an increase in community HIV. More recently, he helped create and test a social media blocker. This study found cutting out Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or any social media cold turkey doesn't necessarily increase usage of other work-based programs such as Word or Excel. So we found that fully blocking people, right, the maximum block that's you know imposed, actually is detrimental to their work time because people do need to have a short break unwind and they become creative. And while we all know too much screen time and technology is to blame for various health problems, ranging from depression to body issues, opinions vary on whether people want more digital reminders at all. There's pros and cons against it. Some people like it or some people don't just because it might be a, too much of a distraction. You don't want to overdo anything. Overconsumption of anything is bad. That's part of the reason Chan believes these and future collaborations between academia and tech firms and figuring out positive usage is crucial. Just like the knife, right? The knife, if you were to use it as a weapon, of course, it will hurt people. But if uh, you use it in the intended way to, you know, chop food, you can prepare a very nice meal that's nourishes uh, uh, to your body. All these businesses that are coming up with these technology pieces, on one hand, yes, you know, they want to make money, but at the same time, I truly believe that uh, the... Uh, CEO, COOs up there, you know, they want their product to be helping the population. Chan aims to do just that. I would like to see a world where technology can be harnessed for good. Leah Bino, Fox 9.